Alright, another Saturday Night Horror Review. It's the end of the summer 2015. I thought I'd sit down and review the others. Sooner or later, they will find you. This movie came out in 2001. And it was the insidious of its day. It was that popular. It was made for only $17 million and made $200 million. That's how popular it was. It was talked about by everyone. And 2001 was a huge year for Nicole Kidman. She did Moulin Rouge, which, which was heavily lauded. She officially divorced Tom Cruise, even though he produced, helped executive produce this film. And then the Weinsteins, Dimension Films, distributed the film. And it was made by the director of the original Vanilla Sky, the Spanish version. So this is a Spanish-speaking director making his first English film. Man, this is one of those films that you have to stick with, and, and then the plot twist, the payoff is worth it. You really think that the setting is going to be like a Victorian, Gothic, kind of turn of the century, 19th century type of film, but it's set in a small island in England in 1945, right after the aftermath of the end of World War II. And her husband went off to war and he never came back. And so she's stuck with her two kids in this massive house. And it starts off with she needs housekeeping. And so a string of, uh, a trio of housekeepers show up to uh, help a sister and everything. It's got great scenery. I think they should have probably took advantage more of the scenery, but the house was their prison in a sense so we get to stay in there they filmed it in a studio even though the sets and the rooms really look authentic and it's really done well and he doesn't really do any special effects in the movie so it's not tainted with CGI and there's actually no from my recollections there's no actual death scenes in the film uh, they do this kind of like still silence to uh, achieve their methods of terror. And so, Nicole Kidman plays this strict, pious, Catholic woman who's, she's hot in it, but she's under-sexualized. And she's real proper, and the island is all foggy and setting, and her kids have this rare skin disease where they can't be exposed to light so they're going around living like it's the 1800s you can see her in the poster with this oil lamp here and um so yeah it's got that creepy throwback feel sleeper hit when it came out august 2011 and the house when the housekeepers come to stay there's there's one old lady and then there's a mute girl, and then there's an old landscaper kind of gardener handyman. They seem relatively innocuous. And as the film goes on, it gets real trippy, and I'm not going to spoil it yet. I'll get into spoiler discussions a little bit later. I never saw this when it came back as popular as it was. I could have on a few occasions. It was actually famously parried, parried, I don't know. Parodied, how would you pronounce it? In Scary Movie 3, where they did the Michael Jackson, I am your daughter, and the communion dress. This is like one of the most haunting, spooky scenes you could really see in a horror movie. I love how they didn't really try too hard to scare you. It was just the subtleties of it that relied on the scariness. I think the actors actually should have been more frightened by this. Oh, you're not my daughter. And it's like a creepy old woman as her. Totally terrifying. Mostly the film is split in two halves. It's the kids bickering with each other. And then it's... I'm going to turn on this music for a second. And then it's... Nicole Kidman... Domineering the, the housekeepers and giving out strict orders and... Like I said, you gotta stick with it for the payoff. It's got a timeless kind of feel to it. Now I'm gonna kind of... Oh, actually, the soundtrack is average. I expected it to be more effective, but it really wasn't that effective to me. 
I love the darkness of it, but it's not too overly dark where you can't see stuff. Um, now I'm going to talk about spoilers and get into that for people who have seen it. So watch the film, come back and watch the rest of this review at the five and a half minute mark. And here I go. So, she gets more frightened. Her kids start to see ghosts. She's like, what's going on? But she's in kind of denial of it, but she's still terrified. She even goes out to seek answers in the fog. And I thought the fog really represented the ethereal realm of the afterlife. And how she goes into it, into this abyss of fog, and finds her husband. And, and, you're, and as the viewer, you're just totally confused. I was seeing this for the first time. I can't wait to see it again in a few years. And... You're like, okay, her husband comes back. He's tangible. She's touching him. They make love. You're really confused. You're like, is he a ghost? You don't know what's going on. You think the housekeepers are keeping... Their, you can tell they're keeping something from them. They're like, okay, what's up? Is the house a portal of hell? Are they ghosts? What's going on? And, um... We end up finding out in the revelation scene of the ending that all these people that their daughters seeing and everything I'm seeing this boy Victor I'm seeing this old woman the old woman ends up being a medium and the new family is the family that moved in Nicole Kidman her character went mad and she ended up killing her kids smothering them with a pillow and shooting herself with a shotgun she was dead inside that house and they were the ghosts. I love how they did it from that perspective. And that's the twist. And how they do the whole... And she's like, we are alive. And she rips up the papers at the seance. And they're really... And the medium's channeling the ghosts. It's, it's so frightening how they... You follow them as ghosts. And you're like, oh... So they're the ones that ghosts. And it's like... The two halves. And, and, and here's the really good kicker. How she's so religious and everything. They kind of represent it as your life on earth is one realm. Then when you die, your soul remains but your body's gone. Your soul remains on this earth. And that's the other realm. And she kind of even realizes in that moment of when they're dead. She's like, there is no God. She almost forsakes her religion very subtly she says it and she said I thought God would give us would soothe us and that didn't happen and she's and it's like she's religious throughout the whole film and then she realizes holy crap you know this is the afterlife you're just stuck in your own vessel of how you died your spirit just lives on and that's how people haunt. There is no heaven. It's just that realm of nothingness. And her husband died in war and he comes back. It's just so great. But if I had to give criticism throughout, I mean, the kids are kind of annoying. The housekeepers are kind of lame. And it's kind of like the same old thing for an hour and a, hour and a half. And then you have to wait for the payoff, like I said, but the payoff is even worth it, which gives, which makes me give it an A minus. The others, 2001. Tune in next week for another horror movie review. I'm out. Thanks for watching.